every so often I'll run into or someone will send me a link to one of these web-based desktop environments. Things like Orb, the Kera Desktop, Daedal OS, and Pewter, and there are even joke systems out there like Windows 93. But this one's been around for a really long time and is kind of in a class of its own. We're going to focus on the more serious ones that actually expect you to use them though. And I'd considered doing videos on each of these, but as I looked through them, I realized very quickly after my first video that there isn't that much to say about them because they're all basically the exact same thing. They include file managers, terminals, coding environments, maybe some games here and there, a text editor, a word processor, maybe the selections and styling they have is going to be different, but they're all fundamentally the exact same concept. A web-based desktop or a web-based operating system, neither of the terms are really that accurate, but both terms tend to float around, are exactly what they sound like on the tin. They take the concept of a desktop environment, typically inspired by things like macOS and Windows, and then try to replicate that experience inside your web browser. Now, that probably sounds really silly, but if you think about it a little bit more, it's not that crazy. Of all the applications on your system, what do you have open most of the time? Now, if you're a degenerate MMO player, it's probably going to be your game of choice. And if you're an Emacs user, it's probably going to be Emacs. But for all the regular people out there, it's going to be your web browser. Every single day when I turn my system on, the first thing I open is my web browser. And pretty much every second of the day, I have at least one web browser open. Like it or not, for a lot of people nowadays, myself included, using a computer is basically synonymous with using the web. If you're on your computer, you're almost certainly doing something on the internet. And the main way you're going to access the internet is using your browser. Now, these demos here don't really do it justice. In Orb, for example, you do have access to a bunch of tools that you can play around with. You actually have a browser inside your browser. You have things like your notepad here. But because of the way the demo is set up, you can't actually open up local files. Now, you can make a file and save it like in your browser cache, but that's pretty much as far as it goes. Now, some of the other ones like Pewter do actually have a means to open up local files. So you legitimately could go and edit files stored on your system inside of this environment. But the better way to do that is running these demos locally to actually be able to access everything in a system, you know, as you would expect. And thanks to the fact that a lot of popular applications are just web apps nowadays, a lot of the stuff that you want to do on your computer can legitimately just be done in a web browser. You don't really need a desktop around that. Okay. All of that stuff sounds neat, and I certainly think they're conceptually really cool, but do they really make any sense to actually use? I certainly think they are these really neat thought experiments. They are these really cool hobby projects, and if you want to get some upvotes on Reddit or Hacker News, they're a great project to make. Just make a post saying, hey guys, did you know it was possible to make a desktop environment in your web browser? And without a doubt, people are going to talk about it. And if you want to show off your ability to integrate these different web services into this environment and have a nice UI to access all of them, that's also really cool. But from the user experience, do they actually make sense? Now, I don't know about you guys, but the way I use a web browser would make something like this basically inaccessible. Depending on what I'm doing, there are two ways I use a browser. If I'm researching for a video, I'll usually have, I don't know how many tabs open, 50 plus tabs. I'm usually checking sources for things and checking different issues that are mentioned and pull requests that are mentioned and people involved in those pull requests and what else they've been involved in. And then when I'm not doing a video, what I'll usually do is have a browser open on like four or five different desktops. Each of those browsers will have three or four tabs in them. I don't know where anything is, and I'm absolutely not going to be able to find wherever I've put this thing right here. I know there are some people out there with really good browser discipline who keep things really well sorted. 
I am not one of those people, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are the same as well. I have seen a lot of browsers out there, and a lot of them tend to just be, I have a ton of tabs open, I never close those tabs, I never turn my computer off, and we just see what happens. If the browser ever crashes, I have no idea how I'm ever going to get those tabs back. So as just another tab you interact with, something like this just doesn't really make any sense to me. Now, I could see a way it does make sense. If you have a browser that has a desktop like this really well integrated into the browser, there is a dedicated button for it or a dedicated hotkey for it that instantly takes you to that experience, that would work really well. But just as like another thing, it's neat, but I don't personally see any way to productively use it. Honestly, half the time, I don't even realize I opened up multiple instances of things like Mastodon, but because they have their, like, ping notification, whenever I get a notification on the service, I get this double ping. I'm like, wait, where did that come from? And I just have to, like, cycle through everything and try to find out where in the world I left that tab. Again, if you keep things neat, I'm sure you could make it work as it stands. But I don't know how many people really would care about this sort of experience to put that extra effort in to make sure they can always find it. But I don't think that means the concept isn't worth any thought. Maybe 10, 15 years ago, sure. Back then you didn't have all of these web applications that every single major company seems to be developing. An easier way for them to deploy software than have to make a Windows version, a Mac OS version, a web version as well. They just make a web version and then hey, you're pretty much good to go, you have tooling like Electron, and sure, there might be some individual tweaking that needs to be done, but it's a lot easier than building proper native applications. And if everything is going to be on the web anyway, something like this becomes a lot more viable. Along with the general functionality already built into web browsers, say video playing, music playing, PDF reading, obviously browsing the web, so building like a web browser inside of your web browser desktop is also really easy to do. But you're always going to have the problem that web browsers are incredibly heavy to run, and there's not really any incentive to make that not the case. If every other browser is incredibly heavy, and really there's only like three major browsers out there anyway, well, hey, browsers are just going to be incredibly heavy. Now, there are also things that might be a bit difficult to do in the web, things that are really hardware and performance intensive. But WebAssembly, otherwise known as WASM over the past couple of years, has been making a lot of things that previously were not possible or just not viable in a performant way, now entirely doable on the web. I think the only place where a web-based desktop has been seriously tried is with Chrome OS. So if you don't know, the window manager Ash is actually a component of Chrome. So when you're running the desktop on Chrome OS, the desktop is already Chrome, and then you're running Chrome inside of Chrome. Like, it's a really weird experience. But on Chrome OS, it's a really seamless experience. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see more people trying out a similar model going into the future. Right now, it's a lot of hobby stuff and a lot of things where, you know, it's a little bit rough. But I could see someone actually trying to put together a really good and really well-crafted experience. Especially now that there are some people working on getting Wayland working in the web. Yes, that is a thing. And yes, I will talk about it eventually. So, web desktops. They are really weird but I don't want to discourage anybody from actually working on them. If you think you've got a really cool idea and you want to make a web desktop, absolutely go and do so. And if it's something really cool, maybe I'll actually go and check it out. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you use a web desktop? Have you ever used one? Do you think they're a cool idea or are you just discovering them now? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And give me all your RAM. Hey,